guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm filming one of my favorite videos to film. If you guys are new to my channel, welcome. I did get quite a few subscribers in the last few weeks just because I've had so many of my friends mention my channel and it's been so great. I did mention in another video that my goal was to get to 4K before the end of the year and I feel like we're getting really close. So. Thank you so much for anyone that has subscribed to my channel recently. If you are watching this and you're not subscribed to my channel, please feel free to go ahead and hit that subscription button. I love playing with eyeshadow palettes and doing this type of video. So if you're into this kind of content, that would be great if you go ahead and subscribe. There's definitely more to come. As far as my background, if you guys are new, this probably looks like a new background, but it's actually not. I film in front of this, or used to film in front of my vanity all the time, but I wanted to switch it up, so I did for the past few months, and I was cleaning my room and I felt nostalgic and I wanted to sit in front of my vanity, so that's what we're doing. I feel like I've given you a thousand disclaimers, so without further blabbering, let's get into what is coming out and if we're gonna buy it or no. Also guys, everyone that helps make this video is listed in my description box. Today I'm gonna use my friend Indie Makeup Spotlight. That page is run by Amy Loves Makeup. If you guys don't know who she is, definitely check her out. I will link her channel down in my description box. I just wanted to use her page to talk about some new makeup that I don't want to forget to mention to you guys. So the first thing I want to talk about really quick is Give Me Glow Cosmetics is bringing their Christmas morning palette back. Now this palette launched last year during the holidays. I actually have it, but I'm not going to get up to grab it. It's a beautiful palette. Let me know if you guys want me to do a look with it. I feel like I did a look with it last year when I got it and it was very limited which I think is nice because it makes it really special and I'm glad they're bringing it back again for the holidays so if you've had a whole year to mull it over and now you feel like you want it definitely pick it up because I'm sure again they won't do a lot of quantity and let me know if you guys want to see a review or something about the palette you know in case you're still on the fence about it I think it's a very cool palette I really think Gimme Glow does some amazing unique things so very very happy to have um, like a lot of eyeshadows from them. I really enjoy their stuff. Another indie brand that I want to talk about right away is Cleonaud is doing a restock of their multi-chrome collection. I'm so excited for this. So when they first launched, I picked up some of their jewel multi-chrome. So let me show you them really quick. So they are right here in the square pans. As you can tell, I have quite a few multi-chromes from different brands. So these are the JD Glow ones. These are the Cleonade, and then I have the Sydney Grace ones. So I put them all in here, so I have all my multi-chromes in one place. But as you can see, I have an excess of the Jewel Tone multi-chromes. But with this new restock, I'm excited to try the Iridescent formula as well as the Glitter formula. I saw Angelica a few weeks ago in New York City and she was telling me that she really likes the glitter formula and I was talking to her very recently on my Instagram DMs and I was like, Angelica, you need to contact Cleonade and tell them that they should let you curate like a favorite set because I would love to just have her pick out her favorites from this lineup. There's like 50 something eyeshadows here so it is very, you know, you really have to like refine it I watched her swatch party video um, once already today because I kind of want to start getting like an idea of what I want to get. I remember from the last launch that they have some like bundles, some pre-made bundles. So I think I might go for a pre-made bundle if I can't narrow down what I want in my head. Um, and it's all going to come down to like how quickly things start selling out and things like that. So I'm definitely like nervous and excited for that launch because I feel like We've waited so, so long for that. And then the other thing I want to shout out is a collab with Mel Thompson and the brand Kristen Audette. So Mel is a wonderful YouTuber here on the platform. So Mel definitely has a very cool vibe about her. I love her channel. She consistently uploads. That's the thing I love about some of the YouTubers I watch is their uploads and they're consistent and they're frequent, which is what I need with youtubers that i like to watch because i like to consume a lot of content from the same people so if you guys know of any youtubers that 
upload pretty frequently, like two times a week at least, let me know down in the comments because I would love to find more people to watch because I'm always looking for new faces here on YouTube. But anyway, Mel did this collection. It is $85, so I wasn't really in the place to pick up two lipsticks and two lip liners for $85, but I've seen nothing but good reviews and I feel like because Mel has such a great reputation for loving luxury products, I feel like anything she collabed on would also be just as stunning and exquisite. So I'm very, very excited to see um, another YouTuber get a chance at a collab. I think that's so cool and I feel like she's just such a great person for them to partner with. So very, very exciting there. And then also back to Clanod, they are sneak peeking. I think this is like a fall collection they're coming out with. They did show some eyeshadows on their Instagram page and said that they were launching new shades. So exciting for them. I went through my single shadows because I really want to get into some of my singles and I pulled out the Cleonad, um, it's called like the 56 North collection. Let me show it to you guys. I like pulled it out and I was like, I was gonna grab some shades from it and I'm like, this collection is so beautiful. And I even actually tested this out so, so much, but I never get around to reviewing it for you guys. I don't know if this is like permanent in their line, but is this not like the most beautiful collection of shadows you've seen? So this was a really nice collection from them. I have so many other collections from them that I need to use. Even though it's kind of late to the party, I still think that it would be fun for me to review them and decide, you know, if you guys should check them out as well. So they're coming out with a new fall collection and I'm very excited to see the reveal of that. And then last but certainly not least, one of my favorite indie brands, Kaleidos Makeup is coming out or has already launched Space Age Highlighters. So these launch on the 28th and they're $14 each or you can get a bundle for all six for $76. So a lot of my YouTube friends have already received their Kaleidos highlighters and I was so lucky. I think I'm on their PR list now. I am so excited because they told me that they were sending me the highlighters and I've mentioned this already in a few videos, but at, at Ipsy or in New York, I got to hang out with Amy in person and she's like the queen of inner corner highlights. She even recently did a video on, a, she does like this thing called single, single Saturday and she shouted out like her favorite inner corner highlighters or inner corner highlight shades and it was really a cool video. She's inspired me so much to put things in my inner corner and I even grabbed this palette which is my sugar crystals palette which was gathering dust because I realized this whole row is just a row of inner corner shades and there's so many varieties of colors that I am so pumped that I bought that now because I can throw those in my inner corners. So I really love Amy for that and the first thought in my head when I saw these Kaleidos highlighters was like, oh my god, those are going to make the most beautiful inner corner highlights. So I can't wait to get them. I think they look beautiful. If they're anything like their eyeshadow palettes, I know they're going to be a hit. And the other thing too I want to say is I was on a live stream. Um, this past week and I had mentioned Kaleidos and I think I kind of saw in the comments that um, you know people were kind of saying like they've definitely know to send the smaller influencers PR because we've all started talking about them and I've definitely been on the side where you guys as a consumer see that happening and you know it definitely does make you skeptical the only thing I can say to as a counterpoint to that is I wouldn't like rave about something that was sent to me just to rave about it because it was sent to me. I've gotten PR from not a ton of brands but I got PR from people or from some brands and if I don't like it I will straight up tell you or if I don't think it's pigmented enough like the brand Cloud Beauty I think they're like almost local. Um, the girl wrote me a note because she is from Minnesota and you know it was I didn't love to say like, hey, these aren't pigmented enough for me, but I'm gonna be honest with you guys because obviously like I've been in your shoes. I am in your shoes. I'm still a consumer first. I'm a YouTuber second. I make these videos because 
for the longest time, I wish somebody had told me like what's a good investment and what's not a good investment. So just know that even though it seems like everyone gets the same PR, especially if you watch a lot of the smaller influencers, um, as far as I'm concerned, I talk about it because it's dang good and I'm so happy to be on their PR list. I bought their first three palettes and I love them. They're amazing and I was so happy to get sent their last two palettes. It helps me save a little bit of money. You guys know how much I spend on makeup. So just wanted to throw out that disclaimer. This video is going to be like a half an hour long. I haven't even gotten to trend mood yet. So I hope you guys understand where I'm coming from and I'm sure that's how a majority of my friends that have talked about Kaleidos feel but you know I get it just wanted to throw that out there so anywho's let's see here so the first thing I see is of course the launch of the century they're like calling it the collab I don't think it's like that big of a deal it's just that it's so they're so well known that it's really like making waves in the community so you guys probably already saw the Shane Dawson, Jeffree Star collaboration. So they did this set of liquid lipsticks that came in a bundle or you could buy them separate. I immediately was not attracted to the liquid lipsticks because those shades I don't really love. I really like the shade Shane because it's so unique. I think that would be a fun color to own if you were doing like some kind of avant-garde makeup and you can use Jeffree Star's liquid lipsticks as eyeliners. So I think because of that reason the two metallic shades are really cool but I wouldn't wear them necessarily on my lips. I mean I would if I was just hanging out at home but I don't really see myself grabbing two shades like that and the other lipsticks are just not really my cup of tea. The red shade um, definitely reminded me of Red Rum and I actually recently filmed a liquid and just a lipstick declutter. I decluttered about a hundred lipsticks which I'm very proud of and I feel like I really was curating my collection and I had so many duplicates of so many similar shades and I just don't want to get into that vibe where I'm just buying the same shades over and over again just because it's new, it's new, it's new. I'm not really as crazy about liquid lipsticks as I am about like eyeshadow palettes so for that reason it was really nice and very therapeutic for me to go through my liquid lipsticks and like pare it down and now I like have a section for like fall liquid lipsticks and I can just keep reaching into that section because I know every time I grab something it's going to go with the eye look I have on. So I'm really, really excited about that. And then the mirrors are cute. The one thing too, I wish I had gotten like on a video and kind of talked to you guys through my feelings of this collection because I feel like I could have saved some people some money. So the pig mirror is really cute and trust me, I love to eat. I'm definitely not like a whole back on my food person like personality I love to eat and I don't mind if people call me a piggy because I am like a self-appointed piggy I love to eat anytime okay I love food so <laughs> I would love to get this mirror but the thing is I bought the jawbreaker mirror just because you know you get sucked in because everyone sits there with their mirrors but I actually hate holding a mirror and doing my makeup I can't do it I usually film with my simple human mirror and holding a something in my hand while I'm doing eyeshadow just does not come naturally to me so I never use my Jeffree Star mirror I actually I should sell it because I'm never gonna use it it's such a well I guess I could use it if I'm doing my friends makeup and stuff I could have them like look at themselves with it but it's not even like a very conveniently shaped mirror so I just never use it and um, even though it's super cute and it's very on brand for them I don't want to spend $30 on a mirror so passed on that and then I kind of was going back and forth between the eyeshadow palettes because I kind of wanted to get it just because I had really built up in my head that I love like Jeffree Star's formula so I was like very excited but then I was like gosh as far as the shades go like I only really like that middle row and then that yellow that pink that orange that green red and then the green shade well like just like one half of the palette really spoke to me those first two lines were so weird 
Um, so I was just so on the fence about it. And then the mini, I was like, I have those blues. Like, I'm wearing blue on my lids right now. Like, I don't need more blue. So I just kind of passed on the eyeshadow palettes. Plus, the packaging was so bulky that I really wasn't into that. And then I'm really not, like, again, a huge gloss person or a bomb person. Like I said, when you guys see my declutter, you'll understand that I don't need any kind of lip, like nothing. I don't need anything. So I was more than happy to skip out on that. So I just really wasn't that interested. I thought the whole reveal was kind of cool. I kind of missed seeing Jeffree Star do a reveal. I wish he had, they had done like a traditional reveal where they sat down and they swatched everything. I think that would have been really nice just as a reference point for people. Um, but other than that, you know, they came up with this really cool money-making concept, and that's what marketing is. That's what sales is, and as a business person, you know, good for the two of them. And this thing freaking sold out. People are, like, freaking out. They're mad that these palettes sold out, and I'm just like, it's fine. Like, if the person you were trying to buy it for doesn't get it for Christmas, like, they'll survive. And I think a lot of places have said that, uh, they don't think this is going to restock until the new year. So it's going to come back. Like, don't worry. It's just makeup. Like, my whole, like, outlook on makeup has changed so much in the last couple of weeks. It's kind of crazy. And I'm really happy about it. I'm so happy about it. I still love makeup. I still love getting stuff. But I'm not as, like, hyperventilating about it as usual. I feel like I definitely have a lot of makeup. So my goal at the end of 2019 and going into 2020 is buying things I love, curating my collection, going through each of my eyeshadow palettes. Like I thought, I thought to myself, and over the last couple of weeks, I love my Natasha Denona Metropolis palette. I love my Pat McGrath palette. So I want to basically look at my Pat McGrath palettes, look at my Natasha Denona palettes, and every other palette. I want to compare it to the feeling I feel when I see my loves, and I want to feel that. If I don't feel it, then it shouldn't hang out in my collection for no reason. You know what I mean? So anyway, to kind of help me decide if I was going to pick up the Jeffree Star collection, I decided to grab my four palettes that I own from him. And it was a really busy week, so I didn't even play with two of them. I didn't play with Blue Blood or Jawbreaker. But when I used the Alien palette, because that's the one everyone voted that I used first, I really enjoyed it. And I still have shades in there that I haven't even swatched yet, which is really embarrassing. So my goal is to play with that palette more. So let me know if you'd like to see another look with it or something like that. Even though it's kind of an older palette, it's still available. And maybe you guys are curious to see a look with it. And I played with the Blood Sugar palette, which I thought was my favorite palette. And I don't know if the formula has just kind of gone off on that palette. But I don't love the reds in that palette as much as I thought I did. I thought there were so many variations of red. But once I started blending it and like doing the eye look with it, I was very unimpressed by the reds, the matte reds. And then the shimmers weren't that blinding either. So I think I'm actually going to declutter my blood sugar palette, which I didn't think was ever going to happen. But it's definitely in my declutter pile right now. So I thought that was a really weird feeling for me. Like I was... I was kind of like thrown off by that to be very honest with you guys. So let's move on because I feel like I've been talking about Jeffree Star for like a half an hour. Um, next is this really cute palette by Zoeva. It is their Precious palette. It's got six shades, two mattes, and three shimmers. I think this is a beautiful color scheme. It's kind of like... I wish ColourPop would do more of these because I know so many people love smaller palettes and they've just been coming out with so many like regurgitating palettes and I think it would be fun to see them do some minis like this. I think if they did like a monochromatic series but with like fun like mini palettes like this I think that would be really cool. I think that would really pique people's interest and especially if they did a gift set of eyeshadow palettes. <sighs> I should be on ColourPop's payroll. Like, why hasn't anyone called me yet about that? Because that's a fucking genius idea, actually. I just decided that, like, a mini... Because you could, like, keep the shade you wanted and you could give your friends the other shades. Like, that's genius. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, let's go here. Oh, my gosh, you guys. I'm so excited about this. I hate when Trend Mood posts about random crap, but... 
Kathleen Lights is bringing back her nail polish. She's gonna call it Lights Lacquer now. And I actually have a shade picked out. I'm gonna paint my nails later. This is Leo from her um, Zodiac collection. I love Kathleen Lights nail polishes. I don't know what kind of voodoo magic is in them, but I've had some of our shades from when she first launched her brand. And you know how when you've had nail polishes for too long, they kind of tend to go all gunky and funky? I can still use those shades. And Kathleen Lights has, an, like, those nail polishes launched, like, two years ago? Like, that's crazy. So I'm so pumped. The bottles look the same, which I'm excited for because, you know, I like having, like, a uniform army of the same shades. And they've sneak peeked, like, two shades so far, I believe. Let me find Lights Lacquer's Instagram. Did she tag them? Yeah, there's this beautiful green shade called uh is this called girl power so pretty it's like a muted color and then this other shade oh the golden shade is called girl power and it's like a golden red orange beautiful shade and it totally reminded me of amy loves makeup so i tagged her in the picture and i was like oh my god so I cannot wait to see her full collection i have a feeling i'm gonna be picking that up because i've missed her nail polish a lot a lot uma beauty i think is how you say it um came out with a brow collection i'm really like a one trick pony when it comes to my brows i use the same crap over and over again it's just like the anastasia brow powder and then i use apologize guys if i have stuff in my teeth because i used a ColourPop gloss over an ultra blotted and that usually works fine but this is getting like really gunky i might have put too much on anyway i'm not really like in the scene for new brow products so i'm gonna be passing on that bh cosmetics holiday collection is honestly really a beautiful collection it's called the fairy lights palette it's 20 shadows for 20 dollars and then they have a shimmering body powder as well as some brushes for $26. So it's really cute. I think this would be a beautiful gift for a friend or a family member for the holidays. I think it's very affordable and I think who wouldn't love like to get a beautiful eyeshadow palette and some matching brushes. Like I think this would be an awesome like starter kit. The shades are kind of fun they're a little bit different I love that like navy blue I love it paired with the pinks I think it's a fun holiday palette and it doesn't break your bank and the packaging is cute like they really knocked it out of the park so I am interested in it but I won't buy it I literally have way too many BH Cosmetics eyeshadow palettes so I'm on like a no buy from them specifically it's just too much so of course 4th Ray Beauty is coming out with new product they are launching a or they're extending their hyaluronic acid hydration line. So they're doing, I don't even care to be <laughs> there. I'm just going to put a picture up. That's what they're coming out with. If you want it, you should go get it, girlfriend. Okay, so Trend Mood announced that Kesha is coming out with a makeup line called Kesha Rose. And honestly, like, more power to the females if they want to start, like, makeup brands. That's cool. But I feel like the whole celebrity makeup brand market is so oversaturated right now so i mean if she does something cool and unique like that's great like get your coin but it's so hard to be stand out these days and i mean i guess you can always count on your fans to buy your product though so that's good so the sephora sale is on in case you guys didn't know um these sales started yesterday for rouge and goes through the 11th and then if you're vib it's 7 through the 11th and if you're an insider it's also the 7th through the 11th for 10% off. So I did buy a few things. I posted a picture of my haul. I bought four items. Like I said, I'm trying to be really thoughtful about my purchases. And I want to save money for the Melt palettes because those are $58 a piece. We're going to talk about that next or later. And then I really want those Cleonade shadows. So... I am trying to be good, which is great. Okay, Auntie Pat. I feel like I've talked about this in other videos, but I'm going to talk about it now, I guess. Her holiday collection is a heated mess. Like, she did, she launched the two quads. She launched some lippies. Some of the lippies were, like, repeat shades, but they were in different packaging. Like, I don't really understand why, like, what her tactic is, because with a brand like Pat McGrath, like, you're on a different level 
to like a brand like ColourPop. You know, people are putting in more money. It's more luxury makeup. And I feel like women that have luxury tastes don't have the time for tactics that are employed by brands like ColourPop. So if you're going to launch a collection, kind of launch it together. That was the weird part too because it's like she did... Four, she did three quads and then she only launched two of them and then she said it was going to be a third one that was like a Selfridge exclusive but then the Selfridge exclusive one launched on her website and then nobody talked about it but then it also showed up at Sephora so that was very confusing. Um, I mean I did do a video featuring the quads but she also came out with like these lip balms and they're like $40 each. <laughs> what? Um, and there's an opaque ebony and a glittering iridescent. I'm sorry, but these, I like these bombs, but these shades are not for me. So I'm going to be skipping out on that. Okay. And then this is the other thing I talked about is on Thursday or Wednesday, all of a sudden, my friend Kat from Rented Fashion sends me a picture of a new Pat McGrath palette. And I'm like, oh, cool, like, maybe it'll launch around the holidays or whatever. And then it dropped. Like, that same day, it dropped on Selfridges, which I believe Selfridges is like a British department store, if I'm not mistaken. And it was like an app exclusive for them. So I was curious because I was like, oh, okay, whatever. And I went on the app and it was 120 something dollars, which is fine, whatever. But then to have it shipped to you, your shipping option was either $30 or like $55 for like a year of like unlimited shipping from them. And I think there are some YouTubers that actually paid that money to get the palette, like to get it so they could review it. And I, I applaud them. I can't wait to see these people's videos, but I was not about to pay $30 in shipping when I know that goddamn palette is going to show up at Sephora and then I'm going to be like, fuck you, I'm not paying $30. So I think it's a beautiful palette. I did see swatches. It's very neutral. Um, Angelica DM me and she's like, that looks like a bougie soft glam palette. And I was like, yeah, you're kind of right, but I love Pat's like special shades and I feel like this is going to be delicious. Like, Am I going to use it every day? Probably not because let's be real, I have a YouTube channel, but I think it's a beautiful like bougie ladies everyday palette. I think it would be fun to play with. So that's my two cents on that. And then ColourPop is bringing a new product to their pretty fresh line. This is going to be a hyaluronic acid creme concealer for $9 and it's supposed to be creamy, lightweight with full coverage and a fresh natural finish that lasts all day. Super blendable and loaded with skin loving hyaluronic acid and coconut water. Oil free dermatologist tested and ideal for all skin types. Available in 30 shades. I mean this sounds really cool. The packaging on here makes the light shades look really ashy but I think it's just the photo. I don't think the shades will actually be that ashy. Um, it's cool, but honestly, again, I've kind of made up my mind that I don't need any concealers right now. I have so, so many, and it's just not something I want to devote a majority of my makeup fun to. Like, I would rather buy eyeshadow palettes because that's what I love, and I don't really mind having the same foundation on, you know, day after day after day because I found some good ones over the last couple of months, and so I'm kind of sticking to eyeshadow palettes because that's what I love to own. But this looks fun. I think... It sounds great. I didn't try their foundation that they launched through. Um, what is that called? Pretty Fresh. That Pretty Fresh line. I haven't really tried anything from it. So that's okay with me. But yeah, it's cool, I guess. Okay, Huda launched these really cute like throwback lip kits in the lip shade boxes. I have a few of these lip kits and I think they're a really fun way to try her product. Comes with a lipstick as well as a lip liner. Huda has really creamy lip liners. I haven't heard the greatest things about these lipsticks though and 
Even though they're in very tempting colors, I think I'm just gonna wait because like I gave you guys my thesis on my lipstick collection earlier, I don't need to buy more, so I'm just gonna wait on it. So Linda Hallberry is coming out with five new additions to her crayon family. Um, she's got some new shades and these look really fun. I really like Linda Hallberry's line. I love her eyeliners. I have a set of five of them and I wish she would find a US retailer. I think she would do so well in America and I think that there's gonna be just so many cool products from her in the future. She's definitely like a visionary makeup artist and I really like her and obviously I'm influenced by Angelica because Linda is Swedish and Angelica is Swedish and Angelica loves Linda's line so I hear a lot about it from her as well but I have tried the products for myself. I wasn't really impressed with the eyeshadow palette I tried from her but like I said I like the eyeliners and I do like the Fantastic that Angie got me as well so yeah. If you're on the fence about trying her line, those are the products I would recommend you try. And then Urban Decay is finally, I think this is so great for them, launching a Moondust palette. This is called Party Favor and it includes six shades for $29. I feel like $29 is like the sweet spot for pricing when it comes to six pan, nine pan palettes from makeup lines. I think this is a smart move. Is this palette screaming my name? No, but I do have the original Mundas palette and it has a bunch of colorful shimmer shades in it. This is like a perfect launch for holiday because everyone loves to play it with glitter during the holiday season. So I think this is so, so smart for Urban Decay. This formula is beautiful. If you've never tried it, I would recommend it. I like to use it with a glitter glue and it's just so sparkly and beautiful and shimmery. I honestly want to pull out mine and play with it. My friend Paulina loves to talk about this palette, her the original palette. She uses it quite a bit um, and I like mine too so I would definitely recommend it. Milk Makeup is launching a holiday brush set. It's $58 and it looks like there are five brushes. I think $58 for five brushes is not a bad deal as long as they're well made. I personally have like all of the face brushes I need currently. I'm always on the lookout for a good like eyeshadow brush but face brushes I'm not so drawn to so that's good for me. Now this is like literally the most anticipated launch between me and all of my YouTube friends. It's the Melt Holiday Collection. It's something like Life and Death, I believe, and it's in celebration of the Day of the Dead. Don't come for me if I get these things wrong because I actually don't know a whole lot about that part of Mexican culture, so I do apologize in advance, um, but I think this is so beautiful and they have a Vita palette and a Morte palette. Both are retailing for $58 and right now I definitely want the Morte palette. The Vita palette I feel like definitely reminds me of the Kaleidos uh, VR Neon palette, but I'm kind of a completionist, I'm kind of a savage, and I kind of want both. The other thing that's kind of making me nervous is that they're pigment palettes and I'm not the biggest fan of pigment palettes. So we'll have to see how that goes. And then of course this beautiful highlighter in Mystic Iridescent Pink Opal shade. I think that would be a fun blush for me. That's gonna be $39. They've got some gel liners, some liquid lipsticks, and some brushes. I'm gonna pass on most of those things, but I definitely have my eye on the eyeshadow palettes as well as the highlighter. So let me know in the comments if you're planning on picking up anything from that collection because literally I'm telling you all my friends are so excited about that collection. So the next thing that is causing quite a stir, I don't know if any of us is really very surprised anymore when Anastasia launches something new. I totally wasn't expecting this. I know somebody like sneak peeked, I think Trend Mood sneak peeked like a gondola and there were two mini palettes in there and I was like oh they're probably coming like you know, maybe like next month and all of a sudden I got like a notification saying they had launched and I'm like, huh? But they're cool. I mean, people were really excited about these mini palettes on my community tab. So if you guys don't, you know, pay too much attention, I do post new releases on my community tab and I have so much fun talking to you guys through my work day sometimes don't tell my boss about new makeup releases when they launch and a lot of you are really excited about these palettes and I kind of get it because I feel like this is kind of like the 
curated wa like curated refined version of the bigger palettes so I think that's nice if the big palettes scare you I feel like these are perfect I did pick up the green one I said I wasn't going to but I did pick up the green one during the Sephora sale I thought might as well and I did see my friend the fancy face had swatched these in store and I'm not gonna lie the green one looked pretty good so I'm excited to see how that does once I actually get it and try it out. The next thing that was announced is Scott Barnes is coming out with a makeup line. It's gonna launch in November. Now, I didn't really know a whole lot about Scott Barnes on it until I saw him in Tati's videos and being featured on Tati's channel, but he is JLo's makeup artist, and he seems to know a lot about a lot when it comes to makeup. I think it's so fun to see makeup artists coming out with brands because I feel like, you know, they know the market so, so well. So I'm excited to see his makeup line develop. It's not something I'm going to run out and buy, but I think it's very cool. And, you know, I'm really coming to terms with the fact that more options is better than no options. So, fuck, if everybody wants to make makeup, like, she's go go right ahead you know what I'm saying so Tati launched Tati Beauty and she came out with her first eyeshadow palette and I've honestly seen really good reviews about this palette the only thing I think people have complained about is she's got a row of these like mattes with glitters in them they're called like sequin shadows and people aren't very impressed by those so I honestly am so proud of myself because sometimes I just hype by things like when everyone's excited I buy something and I was just totally nonchalant about this palette I think it's beautiful but I know for a fact that I have all these shades in my collection I will use this once for a review and you'll never see it again so I'm very very happy that I saved myself $48 plus I think it goes up to like 57 when you include shipping so I'm more than happy to skip it so somebody else can get a chance at it and also it's like sold out and also, what was the other thing I was going to say? Oh, I wanted to say that I thought Tati did such an amazing job with her launch and she was very professional about it. I've just heard really, really good things and I watched her video. I didn't watch her reveal video, but I watched the one where they showed the party that they did with the subscribers. I thought that was cute. The only other person or people I've seen do that is Desi and Katie when they did their Dose of Colors collab. And I thought that was so beautiful, and I don't know that a lot of YouTubers do that for their lines. Um, but I thought it was so sweet, and I think it's so crazy that more YouTubers don't do it. And it's like, why do you keep throwing parties for influencers that literally go to parties like every week? It would be so nice to see more brands do something like that for their fans, their followers. Like, I think it would have been so cool for Mel to invite some of their fans that love their brand and talk about them. It would have been cool for them to have the opportunity to participate in something like that. So just my opinion, maybe they did and maybe I just don't know about it, but I feel like if brands did that, they should really pimp that out because I think that would be such a like selling point for me. I think it would foster so much goodwill for me with the brand. Like even, okay, this is like another segue, but Shane Dawson and Jeffree Star, like they reached out to um, like a very small channel like mine. Her name is Cara, Cara, Cara underscore C. I met her when I did that live stream on Britney's channel and Cara got the collection in PR and it was so cool and we've been talking like all weekend and she's just been talking to us about how Shane like reposted her look and her uh, or reposted her Instagram stories and it's just been really cool to see that and I know it's like a gimmick I get it like I get it. it's a little bit gimmicky but I mean I'd rather people do that like I saw Shane Dawson like tweeted Teresa is dead like that's pretty freaking cool so I'm very happy for the smaller channels that kind of get that chance instead of like the big youtubers like over and over and over again so anyway just my two cents on that Anastasia also launched some beautiful false lashes I was looking at these on the Sephora website they're not even too expensive I don't really do false lashes but I feel like $12 is a decent price these are so pretty like I really think some of these are so cute and if I ne ever needed some, like, maybe I tried out. But for now, it's a pass. Okay, something kind of exciting is happening at Morphe. They are going to start carrying Nabla and Beauty Bakery, which I think is so, so cool. I think it's awesome that 
you know, brands are getting ch more chances, especially indie brands, um, to be in more places. I know Morphe has, you know, locations overseas, whereas Nabla and Beauty Bakery are both in Ulta stores, but I don't think there's Ultas all over the world, whereas, like, Morphe has stores in Europe and I believe Australia, so I think that's such a great opportunity. People are getting a chance to try stuff, so I think that's really cool. BH Cosmetics is launching their Scorpio palette. This is their nine color shadow highlighter palette, and it is $14. So I started off uh, buying all of them, but I've tapered off. Like I said, I'm on a no buy from BH Cosmetics. I am on a diet. BH Cosmetics is the carbs that I don't need to eat. Um, but it's so funny because I see my friends roasting these palettes and like it's so funny because I found this girl and I don't remember her name but she has like a thick jersey accent. Our makeup tastes are so opposite um, but I still like to watch her because I think it almost helps me to watch people that don't like the same things as me because it gives me a different perspective. So she was so excited for this palette. It was really cute but I think it's her sign so that's why she was excited and she's like I can't wait to buy this and I'm thinking in my head it's like it's so funny because there's that saying like one man's is it one man's food is another man's poison or one man's trash is another man's treasure or like that saying it's so true because I could hold up like I don't even know I could hold up this Huda palette and be like this is the best palette ever and you know you're gonna find somebody on YouTube that's like that Huda palette sucks I want to burn it and I want to like I don't know set it on fire and throw it in the trash and run it over with a forklift like so it's so funny how different people can have different perceptions I was literally LOLing watching that video because she's so excited for that okay so Physicians Formula came out with some limited edition Murmur butter palettes these are actually sort of tempting I really want to try a Murmur um, bronzer in a shade. I think there's a shade called Deep, but every time I look at it when I'm at Target, I'm like, this almost looks like too dark. And then the next shade, like there's four shades now, I think. So the last shade looks a little too dark and then the third shade looks a little too light. So I don't really know what to do. <laughs> I'm contemplating just buying it to see if it's too dark, but I'll keep you guys posted if I ever end up buying it. So the next thing I want to talk to you guys about is this palette called the Equalizer palette by Sample Beauty. I believe this is an indie brand. I've definitely heard other YouTubers talk about them. It's a very big rainbow palette and I have quite the collection of rainbow palettes so I definitely don't need this one. Um, but it's kind of cool because one side is matte, then there's a row of neutrals, and then the other side is the corresponding shimmer shade. So I think that's kind of a cool idea. I feel like if you're like in the market for just one rainbow palette, that might be a good one. And they are a UK based makeup brand. So if you're in Europe, that might be easy access for you. And then Huda announced a new palette. It's called the Mercury Retrograde Palette. I'm actually wearing the palette on my eyes today. Obviously, I haven't done a Will I Buy it video in a hot second, but here is the palette. I filmed this look so you guys will see it on my channel shortly, and if it's already up, just check in the search bar because I'll probably forget to link it, let's be honest. But this launched on October 31st, and it's the Mercury Retrograde. So far, I think it's a fun palette. Is it unique in my collection? No, but I think it's kind of unique to Huda's lineup. I really want to use it paired with the mini Obsession Sapphire palette, which is like the blue palette. I think that would be a fun combination to play with those. She did hike the price up just a little bit. It's $67. I think the other ones have been $65, but you can pick it up during the Sephora sale. So if you get a chance to do that, please do. So Laneige came out with two limited edition flavors of their lip mask. They have a like a sugar sweet candy and a mint choco. I really want the mint choco, but I have two lip sleeping masks. I think the other ones are on here somewhere. Oh yeah, it's in here. This is my favorite flavor. It's the um, apple lime. This was a limited edition flavor too, and then they launched it on the I don't know, they launched it online and I have two of these tubs. I have one upstairs and then I kept this one on my desk but I was never using it at my desk so I bought it 
back home from work to keep in my beauty room. Nighttime skincare routine and I really want the mint one. I might still get the mint one, but I really don't need it because I'm pretty sure that I'll maybe be done with it by the next Sephora sale or maybe like two years from now Sephora sale. So we'll see how that goes. So Patrick Top Beauty launched a new category. Um, lips and cheeks. He came out with four blushes and then four lip liners, four silky lip crims, and then four new brushes. So I don't know what it is about Patrick Ta's line, but it definitely doesn't speak to me. Um, I don't know. It's, you know, he's like well known for being a celebrity makeup artist, but again, it just doesn't in intrigue me, so I am so happy to pass on that. Let me know what you guys think of his makeup line. The other brand that is going to Morphe is Ofer Cosmetics. I don't know if I'm surprised, but I guess it's interesting that they're, you know, going to Morphe because, again, they're also available at Ulta stores. So I wonder if Morphe is owned by Ulta. Conspiracy theory? I'm just saying. <laughs> uh, Violet Voss came out with another new mini eyeshadow palette. This is the O Snap Gingerbread Mini. And there's 10 shades for $18. This is limited edition. I really like this palette. I honestly really like Violet Voss's eyeshadow formula. I just haven't bought them bought from them in a long time. I used to definitely be a Violet Voss stan. But the thing is, like, you know, there are so many makeup brands, so if something catches my attention, you know, then I'm going to buy it, but I'm not going to force myself to buy something that looks like every other neutral palette I have, but I definitely can see people being attracted to this. I think this is such a good deal for 18 bucks to get all those neutral shades, and I've had good luck with them. It's, you know, very pigmented eyeshadows, so I would definitely recommend if you're on the market for a neutral palette, checking that out. So it looks like Kim Kardashian and Mario are going to collab for a second time. Um, they are sneak peeking a new palette, it looks like. So I have the original palette. I've maybe used it once. I really meant to do like a week of KKW palettes, but I never got around to it. So maybe since she's coming out with another palette, it might prompt me to do that, but we'll see. Okay, so I don't know if I talked about this in my last Will I Buy It video, but Urban Decay really revealed two new mini eyeshadow palettes. These are the mini on the run palettes. There's a G Train and a Highway Queen. G Train has like a few green shades thrown in it. I feel like it's the perfect neutral palette for you to like dip your toe in the green pool. Not a lot of people love to wear green eyeshadow. I love green eyeshadow. My friend Amy loves green eyeshadow. Like I love, I know a lot of my YouTube loving friends love green eyeshadow. So sorry. So in the middle of filming my camera battery died, so I had to get up and change it. But I was talking about the Urban Decay new mini on the run palettes and how I thought this green palette was so cool. I think that if you have like the Honey palette or any of the neutral naked palettes, I think this would be such a fun palette to pair it with and just add that extra pop of green. I think that's so, so smart of them to do that. ColourPop launched the Bye Bye Birdie palette and a whole collection. I actually bought the palette and the eyeliner and I did film a look with it. I don't believe it's up yet, but I will have that going up soon so if you're interested in that collection definitely go ahead and subscribe to my channel so you can keep up and then there is a new lash brand this is called unscripted beauty it's by the influencer crispy i used to watch her a little bit she used to do a lot of really cool like transformations and stuff like that um but i haven't watched her in a long long time i just can't really relate to her that much so not really interested in that okay so the other thing I did spot is Lisa Eldridge is launching some new, new true velvet lipsticks and I'm not a huge Lisa Eldridge fan but I did see so many people talk about her lipsticks when they launch and they like sell out all the time so I think it'll be cool to see how her new shades turn out so Excited to see what that's going to be like. Uh, that the brand Midas Cosmetics launched a Halloween palette called the Wicked Palette. And I don't know. It's not really my favorite shades. It kind of reminds me of the 3502 or whatever that palette they came out with that 
as like the red shades. I think this is kind of like that palette except of course it's much more curated which I think people will really enjoy. Definitely not for me but I think it's a really cool idea. Okay guys, that is everything for this week's Will I Buy It video. Thank you so, so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts on these new makeup launches. What are you interested in? What is definitely a pass for you? What do you think I should get to review on my channel next? Let me know all that good stuff down in the comments and I will see you in my next video soon. Bye guys.